Michael, we were talking earlier about the fact that uh, Dr. Eli Metchnikoff's book was written uh, 100 years ago this ago, year. That's right. And uh, probiotics, uh, things like uh, lactobacillus, uh, acidophilus, and, and other strains have been around uh, for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I know that uh, for as long as I can remember, you could buy uh, probiotic supplements. But I think, to be honest, uh, for most of the, of the uh, recent history, uh, probiotics have been pretty well ignored by most people. I mean, a few people knew about them and, and knew right. the benefits, but the vast uh, public did not. That's right. But that seems to be changing now. And it is changing, and, and probiotics is still a fairly young field of research, uh, mm -hmm. even though, as you mentioned, uh, Dr. Menchnikoff talked about bacteria being helpful in uh, 100 years ago. Uh, you know, people realize the importance of certain kinds of foods like vitamins uh, even long before that. So only since about the early 1980s have we seen any commercial probiotic supplements on the market. Uh, that's, you know, it seems like a long time, but in, mm -hmm. in the field of research, there's, mm -hmm. there's still a lot of work to be done. There's still uh, a long ways to go. Um, and so what we're finding is that people are still now being educated about the importance mm -hmm. of probiotics mm -hmm. and about the role that bacteria play mm -hmm. in their bodies. As we mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. a lot of people still have the feeling and, and the, uh, uh, it's been ingrained into them the idea that bacteria are bad. All bacteria, mm -hmm. if they're live bacteria, they must be bad. And it's become a, a slow process educating people that, in fact, bacteria can be good. In fact, uh, are, are very uh, essential for life and for good health. And so that's been kind of an unusual thing, concept for people to grasp. It's easy to, I think, grasp the idea of, uh, you know, a drug that produces this kind of an effect. Uh, you know, take an aspirin and your headache will go away. <laughs> or take the vitamin, you know, because it's a, it's a compound, it's a substance that does this. And probiotics are definitely a little more subtle. They don't, they don't produce exactly the same results in every person. There are live bacteria, so they have to grow, and because everybody's metabolism is different, the balance of bacteria in, their, in everybody's body is different. Um, and so it's been an educative process for people to realize the importance of probiotic bacteria in their lives. We're beginning to see things on television and other places where probiotics are, are being now put into common foods like uh, yogurts. Uh, That's right. So, for example, I've seen even cheese where yep. they're making the, the statement that there, that there is a probiotic uh, strain in this. Um, can you, re if you were to consume those products, uh, are you, do you know or can you tell us anything about the, are, are you getting meaningful amounts in these kinds of foods? Well, that's hard to say because most of these products don't make any claim as to the amount of bacteria you're, that you're getting when you consume them. They say they're in the, in the product and that may well be true, um, but without saying how much you're actually getting, it's hard to determine whether that's really of benefit. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's possible to say, sure, let's try it and see if it works, but to take a probiotic supplement that's been standardized, that's been tested, that has an amount of bacteria claimed on the label that can be verified, I think uh, is very important for people to know that they're getting exactly what they're paying for and that, uh, that the benefit is going to come from that product um, rather than maybe by accident. Okay. Thank you, Michael.